community. There's about 4,700 banks in America, only 21% are, or sorry, only 21 are black owned and they have less than 5 billion in assets and the total amount of assets in the US commercial banks is 20 trillion. So if you think about structural racism and access to capital and 70% of African American communities don't even have a branch bank of any type in those communities, we said, well, why don't we think about how do we address it? Well, one of the first things to do is put capital into those branch banks to lend to these small businesses to actually create uh, an opportunity set. And so if you look at you know, top 10 banks, $970 billion over the last 10 years of, of net income. What if you took 2% a year from every one of those banks and said, let's drive that 2% into the, call it the regenerative uh, activity of these uh, CDFIs and MDIs, these small, call them, I call them capillary banks. Uh, what effect could that be? Well, there's a number of things that happen. One, it drives you know, uh, this into the communities. It drives it into these small businesses, which employ 60 plus percent of African Americans anyway, these small businesses. And the average American family gives away 2%. You know, of course, our giving pledge uh, members give away a lot more than that. But you know, 2% feels like the right number, but you do it over 10 years, 2% a year of net income. You can do it through a foundation so that you get you know, some tax benefits across that. But you use that to not only enable the capital infusion into uh, the banking systems and the businesses, but you also have those banks adopt and provide technical assistance and enablement assistance uh, to help those banks actually build more capacity. Those banks don't bank those communities, and so part of me is, all right, here's your responsibility to become more thinking about uh, uh, stakeholder capitalism as opposed to shareholder capitalism. And you can do that across multiple industries. You can do it in healthcare, you can do it in, in uh, you know, financial services, you can do it in sports. And I think that's the solution. So what I'm in the process of doing is We're working talking, with- Are you talking about allocations? Ahead, yeah. Are you talking about allocations or, or donations? It can be both. Um, if you think about it, you can actually donate it to a foundation that actually now drives it into tier one capital effectively in the financial services industry. So there's different ways to do it. Some we can go direct into the, into the industry. You have to have a place to receive it, but there's food deserts in these same communities. Well, fine, let's look at the biggest, you know, if it's the, uh, you know, Walmarts and Amazons and Whole Foods say, okay, let's, let's think about corporate responsibility into those communities to drive uh, more effective distribution of, of high quality uh, food, low, high quality, low cost foods in those same communities. But that's corporations taking that level of responsibility. So I've been you know, socializing this with members of the Business Roundtable, World Economic Forum, church leaders, uh, private equity titans, our philanthropic friends in the Giving Pledge, et cetera, youth groups, the, yeah, and, and a number of our, our um, call it social activists to see if we can build the right sort of coalition to say this is the right thing to do and you know, the federal government can pay a part in this, but I think we need to have the whole community of business leaders now step up and say, let's, let's do our part. And do you see this as a public pledge kind of thing or just something that you do because it's the right thing to do and you do it quietly, but you do it? I, I think you, you, you do it, but I think if we get the right leaders in each of the industries, they will, they will take pride in what they are doing. They will inspire their other industry, uh, call it competitors, to do the exact same thing. You know, I hope there will be a competition ultimately amongst them to say, let's drive this. Who can create the most efficient way to drive their industry expertise capital and revitalization capital uh, in, in, into each of the industries in these communities. I think that will show Americans there's hope, there is an opportunity for the American dream to, to now be revitalized and frankly give us all confidence that we can actually make this a, a, a better, better country and a better place to live.
But right now, they just announced here, I just seen a story, I just seen a report that the FBI is uh, shaking Robert Smith down, talking about possible, listen to this fucking word, possible, they don't know, They. this means that they don't know yet, possible tax evasion, criminal, how about the FBI, criminal tax evasion, right? Uh, so he can't pay it and just get out of it. It's not about that. It's not about paying it. They want him in jail. You must do jail, right? If you black, you must do jail. something but somebody it kind of was able to inspire you it can turn you on to something that you really love and really change your life right uh jay is an excellent communicator that is one that is one of his gifts his god-given gifts right he uses it he's an excellent communicator now and he's good with numbers a lot of drive, a lot of ambition, right? Now, what I wanted to tell people, there's a lot of smart black people. And people believe that they, once, once, once our people believe something, it's very hard to get them to even consider that they could be wrong or they could be incorrect about anything down there. Even when you show them proof, they're still looking like you're trying to trick them. You can show them the sun is fire. I mean, no matter how many ways, you know, you still got people arguing over flat earth. So, you know, when some people feel a thing, you know, it's hard to, you just, you just can't deal with that. You can't work with it. But the problem comes in when people respond off of conversation and they don't do the research to shore up what they what they uh, agree to and then someone else can come behind them behind the original conversation and sow seeds of doubt right you can create so another good quick talker can just all they got to do is just because the person did not really research you know I had one sister she she's a business person and I mean, like I said, our people are not dumb people. It's just you don't know that. I mean, you may be a nurse and you know all of the medicines, you know the proper procedures to, you know, keep health uh, and to make sure that 
you know, you know all scientific terms and you understand how to communicate all the the um, the procedures and the proper procedures to maintain health in a medical environment. But somebody may say, okay, well, we need you to change this tire. You can't do it. You, you're not a dumb person. You just don't know that. You know, see what I'm saying? The financial industry, a lot of black people don't know the financial industry. If you look at banks, you look at things like mortgage companies, you look at things like collection agencies, you look at things like, you know, equity uh, funds and, you know, real estate funds and, you know, uh, what they call uh, venture capitalisms and business loans and all these type of things. These things basically, they almost are synonymous with legal issues and lawsuits, disagreements, contracts that's why they all you have such long contracts when you're dealing with home loans car loans uh any kind of loan i mean you got a million and one it's always attorneys involved there's all sorts of contractual requirements because this is the financial industry so this is what i want i want us to get to understand something like this here when you're dealing with finances, the more complex you get, this is one of the most vital industries that black people have gotten to take. You literally have to be the boss. You have to have your culture take control in that industry. That is a key industry. That is an industry that can control your literal, you know, generations of your actions the financial resource management that's what finances is basically econ economics macroeconomics so you know I you know so I'm just going to say that so let's look at this here so right now Robert Smith Robert Smith is the richest black man in America his net worth is over six billion dollars. He is the CEO and uh, partner of a Vista Fund, uh, and uh, you know he has several businesses in technology. He has one of the best technology. Uh, he's a uh, he's from Denver, Colorado. Grew up there. He didn't. He wasn't born rich, but he had a good upbringing, a good family. He went to public school. Um, and he's a solid foundational black American, Robert Smith. And uh, it's just interesting. Over the past few years, we see if you, you, many of you guys, like I said, we haven't been paying attention to him. But, you know, he deals with economics on long. He looks at it on a, I mean, he's very smart. He understands each level of the financial food chain. Basically, uh, you know, and like I said, I don't understand all, all this stuff. But just looking at somebody like that, uh, you know, when he gave, when he paid the entire student debt for the Morehouse graduating class, and he did some other things, you know, it, it rounded out to be about forty million dollars. You know, six billion, one billion dollars is goddamn six was one thousand million. One billion dollars is one thousand million, and this man has six billion, so he has six thousand million dollars. So he and it, it's working money. It money is working for him, so it's literally generating probably in two months that student. You know, he he just gave that away. Two months of his uh maybe some dividends or something like that. He probably didn't touch any any uh, principle okay, of what he's dealing with. And that's just his personal wealth, but then you got, of course, his company's wealth and some other issue, management uh, situations. 
But right now, they just announced here, I just seen a story, I just seen a report that the FBI is uh, shaking Robert Smith down, talking about possible, listen to this fucking word, possible. They don't know, They. this means that they don't know yet. Possible tax evasion, criminal. You see, just like when uh, Lauren Hill and uh, Wesley Snipes, you know, these are rich people to the average black person, but they're really not on that level rich. See, Robert Smith, he he's 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 so rich that most of his, I guess, friends or people that he associates with are extremely wealthy. Of course, white people, right? Who else is going to fucking hang around that's got that kind of money as him? Uh, he, he can hang around the Byron Allens, who $400 million. He can hang around the Magic Johnsons. I mean, I'm sure he can hang around a few other people, but uh, the bottom line is most of his people are Jewish people. He's around. He's talking to them. He's looking at systems. He's a very smart, intelligent man, right? I noticed over the past year, if you look at some of the interviews that he's done, if you look at some of the uh, conversations that he's participated in, every conversation he brings up how to to restore and redevelop black people. He literally says black, and this is something that I don't know if he understands it, but he probably does because he's an extremely smart person. But so, yeah, so Robert Smith is under investigation uh, by the FBI, criminal tax evasion, right? Uh, so he can't pay it and just get out of it. It's not about that. It's not about paying it. They want him in jail. You must do jail, right? <laughs> if you black, you must do jail and pay. But uh, they say possible because... They're going through the paperwork, but they claim that this was an investigation that's been going on for four years. But they still say possible. So in four years, you Federal Bureau of, uh, of uh, Investigations. See, these this FBI agency is the same fucking agency that is charged with keeping black America underdeveloped. And I don't understand. I don't know if we understand that. This agency was literally started partly to keep black America underdeveloped. One of its most long lasting in it, uh, you know, directors name J. Edgar Hoover, right? This man stated he, he helped to destroy Marcus Garvey's situation, which underdeveloped black people. He, he made sure he infused his agency with the most racist the uh, and the most intelligent racists who would make sure that they kept those type of people in power in their agency. So that trickles down to today. There is no change in that structure, right? So I'm just trying to get us to understand here. We got to understand as black people, we are seriously at war. Uh, there are certain ways and moves that we make. We can make moves. Sometimes it is time to sacrifice and go ahead and take that hit. Sometimes, it, but you prepare yourself to survive that hit, right? Because you know what the reaction from the enemy is going to be. Maybe before you show your intentions. And maybe you can't help it and you have to just go ahead and take that uh because what's at stake is just too great and maybe it's worth your sacrifice, right? Uh, the, the thing is, when black people do help black people, you will be fighting black people because our, our people are so fucking ignorant. They, they will not look. They will not humble themselves and take some time and try to give the black person the benefit of the doubt you know yesterday this dumbass shit i'm sorry tony the closer which i think this is all a government 
agency bullshit campaign. It doesn't look right. Now, Michi X, I used to listen to Michi when she was on the Fly Nubian Queen, Boyce Watkins, and all that. And, uh, you know, Michi, she, she was talking some real stuff, good stuff. I didn't, you know, I, she made sense then because Boyce Watkins literally found Michi off the internet defending Bill Cosby, who was another wealthy black man that was trying to make moves, right? That was trying to make a significant media move. And then the enemy uses some old dirt. They find dirt if you don't have none, but they use the old dirt and then they, they accuse you of it, which just the accusation, whether it's true or not. See, this is the problem. The accusation alone, misinformation in the media, the you know that alone that they use that to smear and destroy your value to your people. So the way that you raised your money, it destroys your support uh, just by them accusing you and destroy and, dis and messing up your name. And now we got to keep in mind who's doing these accusations. I mean, come on, y'all. White people got rich through absolute thievery, fraud, giveaways, uh, fucking welfare, white affirmative action. You know, millions of white people got, you know, hundreds of millions of acres of land for free after they murdered tribes and displaced tribes of Native Americans, many of whom those tribes were black and even Clovis types and mixtures. Right? I mean, this is shit we know. Black people, your defense is your suspicion of your enemy. And you're supposed to give your black brothers the, and sisters the benefit of the doubt. I mean, look at what they did to Tracy Hunter, that judge that they dragged out of court in Cleveland. Or I think it was Cleveland or Cincinnati. The sister got on the court. She wasn't about to destroy all those young... She There was a juvenile court that she was the head of. And since she did not mammy up, destroy the black children's lives like they wanted her to, the damn white man, white people... See, they understand. See, this is the problem with black folks. Because, and it's, and, and, and it's really not all our fault. We really believe, some of us really believe in what we're doing. And we believe that we're holding equal standards. We're trying to be equal and equity. Fuck equality. Stop being equal. You give your people the benefit of the doubt. You give your people the preference. Love yourself before loving others. And when I say love yourself, I am talking about your personal self, but that is talking about also your kind, your people. Now, it doesn't, uh, that doesn't make you more vulnerable to coons or something, you know, that's the this is a misnomer that some of us are thinking. You know, black folks, you're going to, you're going to be done wrong by other black folks. That's normal. You settle your problems with those individuals in a civilized way. Michi, Tony, the closer, former used car salesman, Michi, I think. Dr. Boyce found her on YouTube, elevated her, helped her, taught her some stuff, and, uh, you know, she did good for the platform and elevated the platform, you know, but Michi was so, she's, she's so fucking ghetto. 
you know? And uh, then what ends up happening, she messed around with Tommy Sotomayor, who is, I mean, this man is a known agent. His, his, his uh, mentor is fucking Rush Limbaugh, who is a racist. So that lets you know that Tommy Sotomayor is literally getting paid from white supremacists in order to continue to do his job to destabilize and to create problems between the black man and the black woman, to create gender wars in the black community, that destabilizes us. That's all he does. There is no sincerity in Tommy Sotomayor shit. Michi fucking falls into that shit. I guess Tommy made a, a proposition to her. She must have fucking accepted it. Because since then, she's been around uh, this Grandmaster Jay. She's always doing the wrong. She's making the wrong decisions now. She's really not. She's an agent. She's a fucking agent. And she must be taking the money. Somebody must have made a threat to her. Whatever. But we can literally see when that happened. But also, so Michi's there, the agent. You had uh, some dude that came from nowhere, Tony the Closer. You know, God made it rain, but then, you know, they come and do their little protest in front of the Black House in Atlanta. And it really wasn't nobody there. That wasn't, no, that wasn't nothing. They just was standing out there. They wasn't looking too smart. They were trying to create some controversy because they had brothers sitting out in front of the black house and they got scared because the security guard called the police on them. Now, why the hell wouldn't they call the police on your ass when you're threatening this man, you're threatening the business, and then you got a car sitting out there watching? Of course they're looking and feeling threatened by you because you're creating an atmosphere of threats. You're creating an atmosphere of potential violence. Y'all hound, I mean, you know, if I was Jay, y'all hounding him over these kind of comments, you're trolling him, and then, you know, sometimes he's blocking uh, supporters, sometimes he's blocking um, investors in the fund, which doesn't help him. I wish he wouldn't block people, but I understand because the, you know, he's emotional and this is, I mean, we don't, you know, we don't know what they're personally going through because I think he, he literally probably feels in fear of his life because you got to realize him bringing up this fund, this financial development, just like they're attacking Robert Smith. This is the federal Bureau of investigations. The Securities Exchange Commission did a full auditing of the Tulsa Real Estate Fund. No findings. They couldn't find anything to attack Jay on. The Federal Bureau of Investigations, FBI, criminal. They could not find anything to attack the Tulsa Real Estate Fund on. There's no fucking scam. But you know, the FBI is racist. The FBI is not limited to, you know, they're not limited to finding scams. If they don't find anything, they can create something. They will put their agents in place. We learned this from COINTEL. What's wrong with black folks? Stop helping the damn white man. If the shit, if, if somebody, if, if, if I, let's say, like, right, for example, I had a brother. I had a good a brother who I trusted and I thought he's good. I mean, he's probably a good brother. But this particular brother, I paid him, you know, some money to fix uh, an item in my house, right? And um, he fixed part of it. And then he, you know, I mistakenly, you know, because I thought he was a great, good brother and everything. I, fin I just paid him the full money because he had promised to come back, you know, that next Saturday and just finish it off. So, but when I paid him the full payment, the brother never came back. And I called the brother and he literally, 
got mad because I wanted him to come back and finish the work that I paid him for. And this was some bullshit, right? That's some bullshit. Okay. Now, what is the proper civilized response to that? Now, this is a brother who I went to the mosque with. I went to, I see him every fucking week. So, so, so what's the proper response? I talked to the brother. I said, brother, you know, we're going to come back to the fix my stuff. I mean, I literally got very angry with this brother. And, uh, you know, when we get angry, a lot of times we get disappointed. That is the most dangerous time you can deal with a black person. When, when a black person gets disappointed from something and they are not, they are lied to or they are told that, you know, something didn't work out the way they were expecting it to work out, they could kill you. Because people, one of the things, black people take it as a, a, a situation of disrespect. It's not even about the money anymore. And that's what I see in Tony. I don't even think it's about the money. Tony, the closer, he was mad because something had been said between about him and him beating up his girlfriend, which was probably a very embarrassing time in his life. And whatever that, whatever that was, it was so sensitive to Tony. He wanted to hurt Jay the way he felt. I think that's what it was. But that's just an opinion and I mean I could I could be completely wrong about that. And I probably am I know I'm wrong on some of it, but that's just what I feel at this moment. So but the point is this that is full of agents. You know, Tariq Nasheed already exposed that Grandmaster Jay guy. And that was Michi's ace boon coon. The in fact, not fucking around crew, you know that was some bullshit. Carrying guns, trying to attract all the black people, and then they didn't have the people trained. And come on, man, that was bullshit. This man is a. I mean, Michi's always around agents. We know Tommy is the damn paid white supremacist agent. We know that damn uh, that Jam Master J guy is a fucking agent. So it's letting us know that the FBI, they're very interested in destabilize, you know, creating problems between, creating fights between us. We should be expecting this stuff. So, you know, you know, I mean, like I said, we need to just be, think five times before we come to any kind of conclusion. You know, black people fund managers. Look up Robert Smith. Look at how he, this man was talking about. He was literally setting it, organizing, scaring the shit out of white people, I think. But I don't even think that he understood that he was scaring the shit out of white people because he was talking about developing the black banks, making it easier for them to process the loans so that they could get the proper infusion to the black businesses of the pay tech protection uh, payments from the COVID-19 and loan crisis and stuff. Uh, he had the technology that he was getting to these particular black banks, making sure that the black businesses, which 40% of our black businesses are gone, completely fucking gone just because of coronavirus, right? Gone. And th that caused him to remember that what happened to him in the 70s with the black neighborhoods falling apart, right? Because, you know, after the, 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 uh, the, uh, the 60s with the uh, with the black power movement once they, they decapitated our leadership the black power uh, they killed Martin Luther King they killed you know they scared all the shit out of a lot of black leaders to kill Fred Hampton they destroyed the black panthers the original ones uh, you know and they uh, shut the nation of Islam down for a few years what the, what the enemy does, does here is influ, and flood your, your community with drugs and, and sex. That's what Cardi B is about right now. But this man, Robert Smith, is a business leader. And he's literally 
trying, you know, he was literally, I mean, he understood, you listen to some of his stuff, you will learn a lot. He was talking about how 70% of black wealth is wiped away with student fucking loans. So they were setting up trust and things like that to literally eliminate the student loan debt. That, that would 70% of black wealth is erased because of student loans. I mean, literally. Like me, I got down fifty thousand worth of a student loan that, and it's it's a scam because really and truly, the money that I mean the 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 degrees that I got, they won't hire you. For, I mean, I'm making more than I would been making in, in construction. The real money is in in uh in in in, in learning how to make things and build things and to uh, create systems and manage systems. That's where the money is. But they got us thinking that the money is, is getting a, a piece of paper degree so you can get hired. And, and, and then a white man is always your boss who has a felony. But you're not allowed to have that felony. So anyway, that's it. You know, Tulsa Real Estate Fund must survive. Don't help the damn enemy destroy black people. You know, I believe the black people first. I know that Robert Smith ain't did no criminal evasion of taxes. And if he did, he should. Because the white damn people, this is how they got rich. They got rich from fraud. So, you just got to kind of... Anyway, that's just, that's my take today. Peace out, black family. Just start thinking. Thinking. See, some of y'all are scared to believe the black power stuff is because the media, the white media, makes you think that it's a scam. But it is not a scam for you to have black power. Every other community group economics is normal to them. We're the only people that have to be pushed into group economics. We have to be convinced that group economics works. That's how, that's how destroyed we are. And you gotta think about it. When we start doing group economics, we control our own money. Who's that a threat to? That's why I said when Robert Smith was telling these white people what he's doing, it was sounding so good. They got scared because he could do it. This is a man that has the power and the funds and the resources to actually make it fucking happen. Then we, 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 how, would, how would they control black money? How would they gentrify areas anymore? 